Hi everybody, gonna do a quick teardown video on this older stepper or air core, sorry, air core gauge. This particular one is out of an older GM instrument cluster. I forget what it actually went into. The uh, part numbers right there that I guess that's a five T five G one five five nine. The uh, bearing in this, I think, was shot. There was a couple. They were kind of rusty. But they have good resistors, so I saved them. I have that one. You can see it's a little rusty. This one's a P12236565. Six, six, yeah. And then I do have a good one, or a couple good ones. This is a S1C. One five six nine, uh, but this one does not have the uh, resistor on the bottom. These air core gauge motors work off using a sine cosine signal. Essentially, one signal. Um, eh, it's hard to describe on here, but I'll put a link to the uh, wiki. Whoa, hey finger, the wiki down there. The uh, one side drives this coil that you can see here, and then the other set of pins drives this coil down here. Now, not all the pins are always used. Uh, this one, it looks like only, let's see, yeah, this one it might be bad. Uh, there's no wire on this one, but I can't tell if there was at one time. It doesn't look like it. And then when I look over here, let's see, one wire, one wire up, oh, and then this one has two wires. Okay. So there's two wires here, so that's a common. And then it's, you know, sine, cosine, or sine, cosine. And then this one is just for mounting and for holding and sending a signal through the resistor. That's a resistor on the bottom. It has been... I don't know if that's laser cut. Feels like that's been looks like that's been cut. It might be precision trimmed. I'm not really sure. But I had a request from somebody on how to remove these resistors. And there's all different ways you can do it. Um, I have a way that works well for me, and I haven't damaged anything doing it that way yet. So I will show you. Let's get this in position so you can see it well. I use a flathead screwdriver and a pair of needle nose. I start out with the screwdriver just by getting underneath and I turn it and it starts it moving. The crimps on either side, that one there and then that one there, they pinch against the side of this. They, they grip it like that and hold it tight and they kind of prevent it from sliding up so before we put it back on or put it you know replace it I'm going to show you that we kind of pinch these a little now the other thing to do is make sure you keep it moving up evenly you can see the left sides higher than the right side so I'm going to get under the right side too now be sure to only pry on the metal if you get under the white part here that ceramic you can chip it and break it really easy so don't do that So all I do is I just work the one side up a little bit, then I go to the other side, do the same thing. And sometimes they start to move a little easier as they lift. Once I get it high enough to get the needle nose on. This one's a little tighter than most. It's been on here a while. Oh, there we go, I got one side up. Now once you get the one side off, just go to the other side and do the same thing. Just wiggle. You may want to just put your finger over the top so that it doesn't go flying. There we go. Like that. And there's the resistor. And there's the motor without the resistor. 
resistor went across here. Let's see, I'm going to set that over here. And now we're going to take the rest of this apart. Now, normally I would unsolder this, but this thing's not going back together. And for the sake of the video and time, we are just going to clip the extra contacts and the wires. Now, what you can do, in fact, I would recommend this, desolder these, and then they can bend up. That little tab goes up straight like that. And then you can slide the whole pin out. And these pins can go in the other air core motors. So if you have a bent pin, a broken pin, something like that, that's why I say desolder these. But for the video, I'm not. We'll just pretend they're desoldered. All right. Then, again, we'll pull the pins out. our faux desoldered pins and then I believe we can slide the motor out once we bend these two tabs out of the way these metal tabs these metal tabs go to the casing so we're going to bend those back we should be able to slide the whole motor out. Yep, there we go. So there's the housing, the resistor. Here we'll switch spots. And now you can see the air cord motor. There's the coils wrapped around it. The rotor's in the middle. There's some kind of ferrite in there, I think. Let's find out. It's kind of uh, wrong to do, but it'll be fun. Let's just cut that coil. Cut that coil. All right, so this should now be out of the way. Anybody that harvests uh, microwave oven transformers knows what's going on here. <laughs> now I'll go underneath and then I should just be able to pull it all off. Yeah. There's one coil cut apart. And the second coil, these are much smaller, probably much lower resistance. And the coils are used to hold these plastic bits together, which is interesting. And let's see if I can cut that open. Just drag the snips across the plastic. Oops, missed one. There we go. Pull those out. And we just got a couple little stragglers. All right, and there's the air core motor without any of the coil on it. Or any of the pins, it's just the plastic superstructure. It does spin well, and sometimes that's not a good thing. You want a little bit of drag on these where the gauge won't run right sometimes. So now I can pull this apart. It's just a pressure fit. Take the top off. Here's the inside. And then here is the rotor that is affected by the coil. I don't know if that's magnetic. Sure is. Highly magnetic. Okay. So they have a mag. I guess this is uh, neodymium. Yeah, it looks like it might be. It's hard to tell that coating, although it's very strong for its size. So my guess is this is neodymium iron boron. So yeah, that's uh, all there is to the old, older style air core motors. These are used in other cars besides GM. Just this one in particular came out of a GM. I think it was out of a Tahoe. 
So now, if you were going to install the resistor on a new or replacement air core motor, like this one, put all these bits out of the way, we'll pretend this is a replacement for that one even though it's not. We take our replacement resistor, get a pair of needle nose, and then gently, ever so gently, give that just a little squeeze. You even get close. Just to push those side pieces down so that when they slide back over the pin, they grab. Kind of like this. You can see it kind of starts are a little tough to get started. So a lot of times what I will do is get a socket. Just a little socket. And then give it a little push. Or you can get needle nose and go on either side, hold them apart. And then give it a little push like that, and that'll get it started. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. And again, keep it even. And only go down with it. Don't lift it back up. If you lift it back up, re-squeeze those. And also keep in mind, you can only do this a few times. So I'm going to spread the needle nose a little wider. Just push. If you pull it back off and don't squeeze it again, they could be loose. So there you go. It slides back down. Nice and tight. And this could now be installed in the car if it was uh, the right one, of course. So if you have any questions, stick them in the comments below. Uh, if you uh, like the videos that I'm doing, let me know. You can do that like if you like or do the, the uh, dislike if you like. But if you're not a subscriber, subscribe. That'd be really cool. This uh, YouTube thing's a lot of fun. So, as usual, thank you for watching.